Welcome to another episode of Underworld Diary. If you've been enjoying the stories we share here, feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons to help the channel grow. In today's episode, we're going to once again focus on the American Italian Mafia by looking into one of the most turbulent of the five families, the Bonanno family. This family is not particularly known for its stability, having gone through multiple eras marked by outright violence and chaotic leadership. The most infamous of these occurred in the 1990s when Joe Messino took over. His reign was filled with violence, which seemed to intensify with each passing year. However, during this time, certain notorious figures managed to rise to prominence, avoiding the violence themselves and securing lucrative positions. One of these was a now infamous capo named Gerolando Shasha, more commonly known as George from Canada. Shasha, the central figure of today's video, was highly influential not only in the American Mafia but also in the Canadian Mafia due to his close ties with Montreal's godfather, Vito Rizzuto. With this international influence, Shasha first gained a reputation as a skilled hitman before shifting his focus to business, operating several legal and illegal ventures in both Canada and the US. Supported by two major Mafia families, Shasha continued to rise through the ranks, serving as a middleman between the factions. However, despite initially being profitable, this middleman role eventually created conflicts, with growing doubts about where Shasha's true loyalties lay. As this suspicion grew in the mind of the paranoid Messino, tensions boiled over, leading to Shasha becoming the victim of a hit that ultimately crippled the family. Gerolando Shasha was born in February 1934 in the Catolica Iraclia region of Sicily, Italy. He spent most of his childhood in this area, where his family had loose connections to the criminal world and the mafia. It wasn't until his early 20s that he and his family left Italy and moved to North America. Initially, they settled in Montreal, Quebec, living there for about three years before deciding to move to the United States, eventually landing in New York City. Shasha found himself in the Bronx, where, during the 1960s, he worked odd jobs while also becoming linked to members of organized crime in the area. With his strong Italian roots, Shasha primarily connected with the faction of recently immigrated Sicilian mafiosi in the Bonanno family. This group, often referred to pejoratively as Zips, was rapidly growing during the time Shasha got involved in the criminal world. However, this wasn't the only Bonanno faction he was linked to. Thanks to his connections from his time in Montreal, he also became associated with the primarily Sicilian Rizzuto family. At the time, the Rizzuto family was still working to become the most prominent crime family in Canada and was considered a subsection of the larger Bonanno crime family. With strong ties between the two families established throughout the 1960s, Shasha became a rising figure as the 1970s approached. Further connections within the Bonanno family during the 1970s led Shasha to be officially recognized as an associate of the family. He reportedly operated a small jewelry shop, using it as a front for his relatively small-scale rackets. In addition, he began solidifying his reputation as a tough individual throughout the neighborhood, becoming almost a certainty to be made a full member. His chance to truly earn this position came in the late 1970s and into the 1980s, when he was allegedly involved in a major narcotics operation transporting heroin through Canada into the United States. With connections in both Montreal and New York, Shasha became a key player in this operation, gradually taking on more responsibilities. His financial rise coincided with an increase in violence within the family, which by 1981, pulled Shasha into the chaos. One of the most infamous acts of violence Shasha was allegedly involved in was the notorious Three Capo murders. This triple murder was seen as a power move orchestrated by Joe Messino and other higher-ups to consolidate control over the family. The murders, which took place in May 1981, targeted Dominic, Big Trin, Trinchera, Alphonse, Sonny Red, Indelicato, and Philip Giacone. A group, reportedly including Vito Rizzuto, Shasha, Messino, and Salvatore Vitali, opened fire on the three capos during a meeting at a social club. The shooting took out all three targets, and later reports from Vitali claimed he saw Shasha fire the shot that killed Indelicato. Following this high-profile hit, Shasha continued his role in the narcotics trafficking operation, bringing in millions for himself and the Bonanno family. Along with strengthening his ties with the Rizzutos, he also reportedly grew closer to the Gambino family, who were also involved in the operation. However, Shasha soon found himself in legal trouble when authorities uncovered a shipment of over 40 kilos of heroin. Facing indictment, Shasha fled to Montreal to lay low. 
Canadian authorities eventually arrested him in 1986, in connection to the U.S. charges. This sparked a legal battle over his extradition to the States. With enough money to hire top lawyers, Shasha fought the extradition until 1988, when he was finally sent back to the U.S. His legal troubles continued until 1990 when, in a surprising turn, Shasha was acquitted of all charges. Allegations later surfaced suggesting jury tampering played a significant role in the acquittal. After the trial, Shasha returned to the streets, just as the Messino era was beginning. As Shasha dealt with his legal troubles, Joe Messino became the boss of the fractured Bonanno family, which had lost its seat on the commission after the infamous Donnie Brasco incident. Messino, taking the reins, aimed to rebuild the family and restore it as a major player in the world of organized crime. This rise back to power was largely driven by violence, with anyone standing in Messino's way being eliminated. Entering this new era, Shasha, who was well-connected, wealthy through his narcotics network, a proven hitman, and, most importantly, a friend of Messino, found himself in a favorable position. During this time, Shasha was reportedly promoted to a role where he and his crew infiltrated construction businesses throughout the Bronx while allegedly still being tied to the narcotics trade. With Messino implementing safeguards to prevent informants and undercover police from infiltrating the family, Shasha was able to operate independently, as Messino forbade many capos from interacting with each other directly. This allowed Shasha to continue expanding his legitimate and illegitimate businesses while also strengthening his ties in Canada. Around this time, he even applied for full citizenship in Canada, though it was denied due to his alleged criminal involvement. Undeterred, he continued growing his influence on both fronts. However, cracks between Shasha and the Bonanno family began to form. The first of these occurred in 1992 when a Bonanno maidman working in Montreal was shot and killed. This murder was reportedly not approved by the Bonanno leadership and was said to have been caused by tension between the victim, Lopresti, and the Rizzuto faction. With Messino dealing with legal issues, Vitali was sent to investigate. It was reported that Shasha not only defended Lopresti's killing but also claimed that Lopresti had brought it upon himself due to his uncontrollable drug addiction. Shasha's defense of an unsanctioned murder of a Bonanno maidman rubbed many in the leadership the wrong way, including Messino. However, at the time, no serious action was taken against Shasha, allowing him to continue his operations in the following years. By the mid-90s, most of Messino's legal issues had cleared up, and he became even more involved in the family business. Violence increased, and once again, Shasha found himself caught between Montreal and New York. This time, Rizzuto, looking to completely separate his family from the Bonanno family, refused to send men to assist Messino in executing a hit. Upset by this refusal, attention turned to Shasha, who once again sided with Rizzuto, defending his decision not to send men. Now, having backed the Rizzuto family twice in defiance of Bonanno leadership, resentment began to grow between Messino and Shasha. By the late 90s, tensions were brewing, and it would only take a small incident for the situation to explode. With his influence spanning both Canada and the US, Shasha had greatly benefited from his international connections throughout his criminal career. However, in his final years, he began to experience the downside of this dual allegiance. Forced to choose between two growing mafia factions, his loyalty to Montreal over his own family did not sit well with Messino. Despite this, Shasha remained highly respected within the Bonanno family and across the mafia, known as a capable gangster and savvy businessman. His influence led him to become one of the higher-ranking capos in the family, often voicing his opinion on family matters. Many even considered him for a leadership role, but Messino preferred to promote those he felt closer to. One of these men was Anthony Graziano, who did not command nearly the same respect as Shasha. Shasha, in particular, was not fond of Graziano, a sentiment further cemented by Graziano's substance abuse issues. When Graziano began showing up to important meetings under the influence, Shasha voiced his disdain to other capos, expressing that Graziano should not hold any significant position within the family. Messino caught wind of this and took it as a personal insult to his judgment, as he had been the one to promote Graziano. Many believe this was the final straw for Messino, leading him to utter the infamous words, George has got to go, in 1999. While this is the commonly accepted reason for Shasha's murder, Messino, after becoming a government informant, claimed that Shasha was actually killed because he had murdered the son of another maidman. 
Whether this was a rewriting of history or the truth is up for debate, but either way, Shasha's fate was sealed. In March 1999, Shasha got into a car filled with Mafia members, reportedly including Di Filippo and John Spirito. The car drove for some time before Di Filippo allegedly shot Shasha seven times, killing him instantly. His body was then shoved out of the car and left on the side of the road. Following Shasha's death, Messino's firm control over the family began to loosen. Shasha had been held in such high regard that his murder was seen by many as unnecessary and an example of Messino's aggression going too far. Soon after, the family was once again crippled by law enforcement, leading to Messino's decision to cooperate, during which he admitted to ordering Shasha's murder, effectively ending an era within the Mafia. Thank you for watching another episode of Underworld Diary. If you enjoy the stories on this channel, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to help us grow. Additionally, for those interested, you can further support the channel by checking out our merch through the top link in the description. If there are any topics you would like to see covered in future videos, feel free to leave a comment down below, if not, I will see you next time with another story from the underworld.